This is Crypto Your. It was a easy uh, baby challenge as part of HXP CTF. Um, to me, it was more of like an easy medium challenge, but looking at how fast some of the teams solved it, uh, this team solved it in four minutes, and this team solved it in eight minutes, 12 minutes, 16 minutes, so I guess uh, depending on who you are, this is a baby challenge, but uh, either way, it was a fun challenge. Uh, it says, uh, XOR is so last year, just like the CTF, introducing your. And so in this challenge, instead of using XOR, they're going to be using uh, the inclusive or, uh, which is like the normal or straight line bracket. Um, uh, my solution for this was to use Z3. Um, there might be smarter ways to do it, but basically I just collected a whole bunch of ciphertext and I passed it off to Z3 and Z3 was able to solve it. Uh, not the coolest way, but you know, it worked. Um, so taking a look at what we have, um, it's going to define a list of greets. Uh, it's going to load the flag. Normally this is like a, a parsed out flag. It says flag and code. All the characters are between, you know, the normal ASCII range. It's going to generate a random key, which is 16 bytes of randomness. It's going to pick one of these greets. It's going to format the zero with the key in hex, and it's going to format this uh, with the flag. So it is interesting that the message actually contains the key itself in hex, uh, which leads to some pretty interesting stuff. And I think that's, uh, if you were to like solve it correctly without using Z3, I think that's the trick you're supposed to exploit. But if you use Z3 uh, and you just kind of do it the dumb way, um, the no thinking way, uh, you don't actually need this. I don't, I don't actually use the key at all uh, that's inside here. But anyways, um, and then it's going to do, oops, this is like this uh, from a previous recording. Uh, it's going to or the secret key, you know, mod 16, because there's only 16 bytes, with whatever greeting it picked. And then it's going to print out, give us the output. So they gave us that netcat port, uh, this one. And so if you run the netcat port, it's just going to give you one the results of one of these. So it's going to generate that random 16 bytes, and it's going to do that or operation um, against whatever greeting. Uh, and so you can kind of tell which one is which just based off of the length. So if you run this enough times, eventually you'll find the longest one. And you know the longest one is probably this. So like I said, if this was a XOR, so it's doing an OR down here. If this was an XOR, uh, this challenge would be trivial. Uh, this is just a repeating XOR attack. Um, you would take, you know, the first 16 bytes or whatever, 0, 1, 2, 3, blah, 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 all the way to 16. We have the plain text and we have the cipher text. And so if you can XORs those together, you'll get back the key. The problem is... Uh, or itself is not a reversible operation. And so what that means is, like I said, we have, there's the key, um, then there's the plain text. Let's say the plain text is a, I'm sorry, the cipher text is a one, and the plain text is also a one. If this was an XOR, we instantly know that K is a zero. It's the only thing it could be, because if K was a one, this, this equation doesn't make any sense. The problem is with or. So when we have, if this is our key, this is the operation. This is our uh, ciphertext. So that's what we get out of the netcat. And we know what the plain text is because, you know, the plain text is going to be this. If we, if it's equal to one, we don't know what K is. K could be zero or one. Both of these conditions are true. And so we don't, we just don't have enough information. The only time we get information out is when the ciphertext bit is a zero. And then we know that both of them must have been a zero. So like I said, there's probably clever ways to do that. But the fact that the key is embedded in here, uh, in hex, uh, eventually, you should get enough zeros uh, such that you can kind of figure out, you know, like this key bit had a zero, so then I know this one must be a zero, and if it's a one, then I know that, you know, the original message or the, the, the other key bit must be a one. Like, I'm sure there is smart ways, but uh, I chose the lazy way. Um, I just generated a whole bunch of output, and I sent it to Z3, and Z3 was able to crack it. Um, so to do that, uh, first thing is we needed a script to download a whole bunch of ciphertext. Um, so... Uh, this just finds, I found out that this was the longest ciphertext, so I know that that corresponds to this message. And so I just went connected to the netcat port a bunch of times, a thousand times, and I, do I downloaded and saved all the longest ciphertext. Cool. And so from there, I just saved all the ciphertext into a big array, and we start writing some Z3 code. So here's all the ciphertexts, I load them in. Uh, I construct a plain text object. Um, so there was that one tricky bit, you just need to be careful and make sure you do an encode. Uh, with this uh, U with the two dots on top. Um, otherwise, like if otherwise if you do just like a naive XOR on it without doing this encode call at the end, it'll treat that as a single character. But if you do encode, it'll split it out into the bytes. And that's important because if we see how they do it here, they, they also do that encode. Um, so something to keep in mind. Um, so I, I create a plain text object because we need that to do the XOR with our symbolic key. We X or we sorry, we do a normal OR with that with our plain text object. And then we assert that is equal to the ciphertext that we get out. Um, so I create a Z3 flag, um, 
nothing too exciting. And then I just loop through all the ciphertexts we have, and I just tell Z3, like, hey, this is what the plain text looks like. This is what the ciphertext looks like. Um, you have to create a new key object for each of the ciphertexts because they're all using a different key. But eventually, it's able, Z3 is just able to build up, like, you know, a big enough corpus of information that it can figure out, like, hey, the flag is always the same. The flag is here, uh, and this must be what the flag is. Um, yeah, you just ask Z3 to dump the flag, and it dumps it out. So if we do Python 3 solve, actually, I need to do Python 3.10 solve.py. Um, it figures out that the flag has a length of 47. It says Z3 is satisfiable, and it prints out the flag. So uh, pretty fun challenge. Um, yeah, it was it was tricky at first to get started to figure out like how you're actually supposed to even approach this. Um, like I said, there probably is a clever way uh, with knowing that the key is here. And you would probably have to build out like a system of equations, but you just pass it to Z3. Um, it solves it for you. Uh, I'm excited to see how this team solved it in four minutes. Uh, that's just mind blowing. Like I didn't even know what the problem was doing in four minutes and they already solved it, uh, which is crazy. But anyways, thanks for the fun challenge and I'll see you at the next CTF.